this episode of the Third Gallon Podcast. Well, bang, okay? Though they wiped out the cultists. You guys had, like we said, you'd gone and wiped out a bunch of easy, wimpy-ass cultists and just slain Matt Mercer's in one hit. But Boom. failed to stop the problem. But it didn't seem to stop the problem. Another officer was murdered in Maribor. After talking to the Nilf Guardian Quartermaster, Alwyn, the next day uh, when he was supposed to bring your payment, you found out that he had been murdered. Sure is a shame. He seemed a decent sort. And they basically said, y'all ain't done yet. And now Intrepid Inc. has to solve a mystery. Was it a glove that had a bear trap taped to the end? You know what? <laughs> you look under the bed and you find a bloody bear trap glove. Oh my goodness. How could you have possibly known? I'm a genius. No, there's no bear trap. Oh. Jinkies, it's time to search for clues. If they're smarter than me, they can't be trusted. That's most people in this game, Nug. You stop that! Now. Hey everyone, it's your favorite Gremlin Wrangler and GM, Derek here. I got a couple things to share with you guys before we get into today's episode. Uh, The first thing is that season two is almost over. Episode 23 will be the finale for season two, and that's coming out next week. Just honestly, it really doesn't feel real that we're wrapping up another season. And it always makes me feel just so sad letting go of these characters that we've gotten to know. But... Because season two is wrapping up, that means it's almost time for catching up. And if you're new here, catching up is what we do at the end of a season. We all sit down and talk about our thoughts and feelings coming away from what we've just played. And we take a little bit of a dive behind the GM screen. You know, if you have any questions or comments that you would like to have us read on catching up, then go to the Google form that's linked in this episode's description. Uh, It'll also be posted on our social media uh, as well. Get all your responses in by the end of the day on Friday, June 17th, and we'll do our best to respond to them in the episode. Now, on a side note, if you're listening to this in the future and you have questions and you want to leave a comment, uh, go check out our YouTube channel. Our channel is called The Third Gallon, and we post our episodes there with visualizations. And plus, you can comment like directly under the episode you're looking at. Uh, We try to be pretty responsive to those comments. I'm active on there as the Third Gallon channel, and I know I've seen Micah and Kat uh, be on there as well, talking to folks. Uh, And if you're listening to this on YouTube already, sup? (laughs) That's all I got for today. Uh, Now please enjoy Season 2, Episode 22, The Phantom Cultist. So I imagine all of you thought that fight last week when you were headed into it was going to go... Uh, in one particular direction or another. But I'm not sure you anticipated it going exactly the way it did. I anticipated it going pretty much that well. Really? I did not anticipate I'm sorry, that many fumbles. But <laughs> after the fight with the wolves and after the fight with the drowners, I realized that if you're throwing multiple things at us, they're not going to be strong. And I have pumped Nug swordsmanship. Yeah. So I wasn't surprised that they were that easy. I hoped they would have. I, I thought maybe there was a gimmick that was going to make yeah. them harder or a monster would be joining the fight. But the cultists themselves, I was not scared of. Yeah, that's fair. Um, I mean, I I, I admittedly, as the GM, I knew going into that fight that you guys are probably going to mash it. Um, I mentioned the spell that I thought I was going to, I thought I was going to be able to stun Nug. I didn't expect to win. I honestly didn't expect to kill anyone either. But I figured I could at least stun Nug and then I would make you guys be nervous. Because if Nug got stunned... Even if he got, you know, critted and not much damage actually happened, like, you would, like, be nervous, you know? But I didn't anticipate it to go that way. Uh, Literally one-shotting the boss, the non-Matt Mercer, Uh uh, in round one before he could act. Just straight up one-shotting. What was the other spell you did try to cast? The one Uh, that Nug dodged? Yeah, so that spell was called and this the reason i looked it up is the the guy you killed was a preacher so he had invocations Mm -hmm. the other cultists could cast spells but they're technically like mages which is dumb 
because you have to go to school to be a mage. And I don't think these are the kind of people that would go to school for years Listen, and then join a cult and get wiped out. What good does school ever do for magic? Uh, <laughs> but the spell I cast at you was called Blinding Dust. Oh. Basically, I could have blinded you. Oh, that would have been not Permanently great. or temporarily? Uh, temporarily. Blinded is your eyes have been blocked or damaged until you take a turn ah. to clear your eyes. You're at a minus three to all attack and defense and a minus five to all sight-based awareness checks. <laughs> Nug still would have crushed them. <laughs> yeah, you would have probably been fine. Um, it just would have been slightly spooky. But yeah, I was like, I should be able to... Because ca- Web of Lies was a preacher invocation. his first level, or not first level, uh, novice. So I was like, I sh- this is what I should be able to do. And I couldn't. So it made me sad. Uh, that's why I was staring at it. But also they had less good spell casting compared to him. They were just cannon fodder. Mm-hmm. So... I pretty much knew how that was going to go. <laughs> um, and they got smooshed. Um, Did you expect that many criticals? Honestly, I expected a fair few because like criticals aren't just, you know, your natural 20s in this game. They're beating a number by a certain amount. And I did not have a lot of bonuses to my rolls. Yeah, what was your dodge, if you don't mind saying? There, I probably shouldn't have been using dodge as much, but so what they had was uh, the individual cultists. They had a dodge of nine, a reposition of seven, and a block of 11. Oh. So I probably should have been rolling block, but if I did that, their dagger would have shattered very quickly. Oh, you poor thing. Yeah. Nug. Pity from the Jacob. Nug had a plus 19 to his cord. Oh, I know. I know. So it's like, even if I roll decently, you're probably still going to hit, and I only have to roll middling for you to crit. So that's not unexpected. <laughs> I was joking earlier when I made that little meme. I don't know if that was on the podcast or not, but, you know, the, the strongest cultist defense versus the weakest Nug's offense. Yep. And uh, I was right. Yeah. Yeah. No, you're, you're right. Uh, and I think that's like, it's a little bit of the game. It, it's already swingy, but it's, I think I, I mentioned this off air. The game works really well when you're fighting one to two strong things, mm-hmm. but multiple weak things just get eclipsed by the math really easily. You're never perfectly safe because of the exploding rolls, but they get eclipsed by the math pretty easily. And it's honestly really hard to do a combat. Like in that combat, every time you critical, we forgot to roll stun saves. Um, yeah. There's just a lot of steps to it. And the more people you add to it, the more that kind of bogs down. Although we've gotten pretty fast at it, but Un- still. Unlike, say, playing Pathfinder, and one way to make a combat more difficult is to just throw more enemies at you. Yeah. Even if they're not the most powerful, they can overwhelm. Yeah, I think Pathfinder runs in the same kind of problem, at least for when I've been a player in Jacob's games. As the DM, I've less able to judge it, I guess. But like, if you're trying to hit a certain CR, which is a system Pathfinder has, it's not in this game, but like, uh, you know, this game typically tells you every time it gives you an encounter, roughly how many based on the number of players to add. But Pathfinder, you have that CR math to try and figure out what your party can handle. And whenever you're doing more than two things in Pathfinder, because of the scaling math, you can also run into this problem pretty well. But if this is made worse by the beating a critical is beating by a certain amount so they can die faster. The only game I've seen that really does minions well that I've personally played that I've heard of plenty of them would probably be 5e because you have bounded accuracy. So even your strong higher level players aren't that mathematically that much higher than weaker enemies. Um, To a certain extent. Yeah. Uh, There's still a chance a weaker enemy can hit. And D and D five E like a substantial chance, and yeah, five E can turn into kind of a hit point uh, attrition fight. But yeah, it, your 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 weaker minions do have like a role in five E that you don't get in this game so much, and you definitely don't get in Pathfinder because the math just works differently. Yeah, and like weaker things are just going to get eclipsed. But yeah. I tell you one game though that we have played, another one I just thought of that does get spicy when there's a lot of people in it forbidden lands. forbidden lands because the math is very narrow in that game so 
I'll never forget the slaver fight. We should have lost that one. We should have lost that one. Yeah, you probably should have lost and got captured, but I I rolled terribly the whole fight. I, I, I knocked out Kali, and then on the rest of the fight, I rolled terribly. If you haven't listened to season one out there, listeners, that was a good episode. Um, Spoilers. Yeah, but they're in season two now. They should know better. Um, boy, I tell you, I just, I can't believe we're almost at the end here. Like, obviously, you guys haven't solved the investigation here. I don't know what you're talking about. But I, I just can't believe we're almost at the end of the second season. We were told to kill every cultist, and every cultist is dead. No, 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 no. You were told that these people were dying and that you were going to solve the issue. And they told you about the cultists. Uh. And you just said, ah, yes, it's the cultists. I'll take care of those little, those little green fire bastards in the sewers. And at least as of now, you've you've wiped out as many cultists as you've seen, and it's still happening. I mean, despite all your gut punches to the other guy. Yeah. I thought he punched him in the face, but that's okay. That's you know, it's details. Doesn't matter. Semantics. <laughs> well, I, I, I guess I'm already transitioning. I, if you can't tell, I'm eager to play today, so I'm already transitioning into the uh, episode. So why don't we uh, why don't we get our prompt out of the way here? Long ago, the four nations were at peace. Oh, oh, wait, I, a prompt. Hold on. I have this. I, <clears throat> um, I don't. Please write an essay about the time in which you were scared. Fitness gram pacer test. There are three kinds of volcanoes. Write a paper on each kind of volcano. No. Huh. <laughs> it's a prompt. Long ago, the worlds collided in a cataclysm known as the conjunction of the spheres. Chaos filled the world as vampires, ghouls, trolls, humans, and other monsters poured into the world. The witchers, mutated by magic and alchemy, were created by human mages to stem the tide. That still says steam. Steam the tides! Hundreds of years later, monsters are rare, but evil remains. As war ravages the northern kingdoms, dangerous monsters lurk without and within. In the, in the world, world of the, the Witcher. Witcher. Oh, no, no, the Witcher. world of the Witcher. So when we last left off in our other episode, you guys had, like we said, you'd gone and wiped out a bunch of easy, wimpy-ass cultists and just slain Matt Mercers in one hit. But Boy. it failed to stop the problem. But it didn't seem to stop the problem, as after talking to the Nilfgaardian quartermaster, Alwyn, uh, you even captured one of the one of the cultists, the next day, uh, he, when he was supposed to bring your payment, you found out that he had been murdered in his bed. Sure is a shame. He seemed a decent sort. Well, he did. Um, yeah. What was that? A spider webby wound? Yeah, yep. like mm -hmm. the other ones. Like the other ones. And they basically said, y'all ain't done yet. Yeah. And that's kind of where well, we left off with you guys. Excuse me, Captain. 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 <laughs> So that's where we left off with you guys. This, something is still going on. People are still, or not just people, uh, Nilfgaardian officers are still getting murdered. You had, you don't think you've completely uh, wiped out the sewer because you're convinced, at least uh, if I'm judging the player's tone correctly, that a big evil spider lives in the octagonal pit. Yes. Uh, in the temple. Yeah. If this were Pathfinder, I would say that it was a drider. But yeah. I don't think those exist in Ah, uh, because Witcher. it's deep underground. It's a portal to the Darklands. And more along the lines of it's intelligent and spider-like. Uh, this would be a perfect time to transition into like a 5e or a Pathfinder 1e game. You just fall through the hole and now you're in oh, you, the Underdark. Now you're in Galarian. <laughs> <laughs> so went through a portal, a, a conjunction of a cube. This is how you change editions. <laughs> <laughs> All you GMs out there. Fall through a portal. Mm -hmm. Well, Nug will suggest that we head back underground to yeah. the cultist lair. And to be fair, also, uh, y'all discovered that the octagonal hole also contained a place of power. Yes. Uh, and Viverwind did not draw on it because you all were a bunch of uh, weenies that ran away from or, the hole. Or the yeah. very smart people because there is something. I, and Viverwind was low on stamina. That's, yeah. that's being 
generous, Steve. You're big dumb. <laughs> I wouldn't even call that yeah. meta gaming. You could just tell if you had like if you could quantify your stamina. I'm sure you could tell if you were low on, you know, your will to push. Will to go on. This Matt Mercer cultist just keeps <laughs> looking at me with a a, a disappointment. With a mood that I empathize with. I think before we leave, uh, I would like to go talk with the Beastus? Yeah. I want to see if any of them are dead. Ah. No, go, go. Oh, because they may have been Matt Mercer. Yeah. Oh, we should check in. No, go follow. Sure. You go You go to the temple um, and you see the busy scene as it's been the past few times. The head priestess, I believe her name is Gertrude, is still out there kind of running the show. And you see the uh, three priestesses. Uh, Siska is the one that you'd interacted with, the Gwent player. Um, you know that you also found letters addressed to two of these priestesses. Mm-hmm. One of them you know is... Your little peppermint flower and uh, my Gwent adversary or something. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Wait, two of them? Or are we assuming that there was a pet name, two different pet names for the same person? Oh, we assumed there were two different people. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. He's a player. Yeah. He's a mage. Uh, so you go up, you, you see all three of them uh, working. Uh, is there anything you want to say or do? Uh, I kind of just want to check to see if any of them smell like peppermint. Um, I'm going to go up to them and sniff them. Just Peppermint's a strong smell. I mean, it is. Do we like? Do we want to give them their letters? Because Nug can give Gwent Lady her letter. Do you want to do this with air bubble active? I'll just ask if any of you know what that's right. I'll just ask if any of them <laughs> knew the guy that lived where we're staying. We're not in the suit. How long does Air Bubble last? I have no idea. I was just, <laughs> like one d ten minutes, but I'm I can cast just it without expending salty because uh, all my fun endurance rolls have bounced harmlessly off of Viverwind. Hey, not off of my character and Nug. Yeah, it's just oh, I yeah. have a good endurance. <laughs> Nug will take the letter and he'll give it to the Gwent priest. Is uh, what do you Should say? Should we? He'll be like, oh, you're, we's staying in a house of some feller, and we found some letters in his study, and he, I, well, this one's for a Gwent playing priestess, and I think you fit that bill pretty good. And he hands her the letter. Oh. And she takes the letter, and she opens it up, and she gets, like... Teary-eyed? Misty-eyed, yeah. He says, yes, I... Wipes tear. I was involved with with Berend. Uh, he was such a gentleman whenever he was here. I am looking for a little peppermint flower. Oh dear. <laughs> That's what you say. Yeah, really. Are you loud. in the same area with the, with Nog and Siska? <laughs> yep. Uh, make an awareness roll. <laughs> uh oh my god. Here we go. Fourteen. Fourteen. Yeah. Uh, there's too many people moving around. Uh. You don't see anyone react. Uh, this is an inheritance letter <laughs> from a passed away rich mage. Uh, That's a lot of zeros. <laughs> <laughs> uh, peppermint flower. <laughs> Just little peppermint flower. Peppermint flower, comma little. Uh, I have and a, you're saying this next to Siska? I'm just sort of... <laughs> I have a letter here for a, area. a flower, a little peppermint flower. <laughs> uh, you don't see anyone oh react, but I'll say Siska says, who, who wrote this letter? Do you know? Does this also come from Baron? Mm-hmm. Siska's the Gwent one, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Lawyer... Do you know who a peppermint flower is? That two timing. <laughs> no good. Man horde. Dirty rotten. Can I see right the letter? Right no. It's a private for the little peppermint flower. She stands up. But oh. <laughs> if you would show us to a little peppermint flower, you could probably be there. She walks away while you're read. talking. <laughs> I'll follow her. Okay. And she goes and she gets this other priestess, you know, Uh-oh. wearing the same headgear. Uh, Does she smell like peppermint? Nope. Nope. 
Okay. But she brings her back. Does uh, she wear red and white striped clothing? Is she perchance an elf? Is she, is she an a actual candy striper? flower? <laughs> no, she brings back another priestess. Um, she has brown hair uh, under the priestess like hood thing. Um, uh, she brings her back and says, this is Anitia, your peppermint flower. Oh, boy. I assume Baron had a similar letter <laughs> for both of us, looking at the letters now. Delivery for you, ma'am. <laughs> yes, unfortunately, we uh, there was no external um, addressing, so we did read it. It was exactly the same except for the titles. Ah, I'll leave you then. Uh, and you <laughs> oh, see boy. Says, uh, did, did Baron have a, a letter for me? Indeed, he did. Ah, I see. It's kind of funny that he asked both of you to come with him. What would have happened if you both went? She gets more visibly upset that he's left, and she says, well, I'm just... <sighs> Puts her hand on her chest. I'm, I'm glad he's... I'm glad he's alive, I guess. Uh, the last time I saw him, he was at a party with a bunch of beautiful female mages. Oof. What? I mean... Yeah? Was he hitting on anybody? He was being very friendly. Well, I would be friendly all the time. Where, where did you find this letter? In the sewer. In a study of his. In the sewer. In the sewer? Yep. But you said you found it in the study? There's a link from his house to the sewer. It, Why are we telling the secret this? door? It was a hidden study. Wink. And he winks. Uh, th- thanks for, for bringing this to me. Uh, I, If you need anything from me, just, just let me know. Um... Ineth is visibly are, are, uncomfortable. Are you okay? She seems upset. Do you want to roll human perception? I would love sure. to. Sure. And this is what, minus three? Yes. Minus three? Elf. Is it really that big of a... 22. 22. Uh, you can tell she is not just upset. Oh. Like, she is... Heartbroken? A little panicky. <gasps> oh? Mm-hmm. You're not sure why. Oh, by the by, nice critical. Thank you. Yeah, that was a critical in the human perception, so good job. Is no, there... got a 17. Would he be able to tell the same? Uh, is that with your minus one, I think? Nug doesn't get it because he his thing, he's treated like human because he was ah, raised by them. Then yes, you're fine. Uh, you also pick up that she's, there's, there's something else going on. Uh, but she, she, uh, yeah, she heads away unless you want to say anything. Uh... I, I couldn't help but notice. You seem nervous. What's wrong? Oh, just, you know, uh, someone I care about very deeply is uh, lied to me and also had to escape the, the Nilf, Nilf Guardian forces and oh, worried you're... about their safety. Oh, he's perfectly safe. He, he is? Yeah. Oh. Uh, yeah, he's, he's a wizard. Yeah, he's got other safe places. You know, wizards can well, do I, I things Well, I read like, that much from the letter, but, you know, making it out of here is hard, so... Uh, he I can mean, probably teleport like I can. We saw him, like... How many weeks ago? Like, it was a while ago, before the... About a month ago. Months. Yeah, but, I mean, it would have been before this. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, he's fine. Don't you worry about him. I know, I'm just... Uh, I'm just... Uh, I'd be more worried about your friend over there. What friend? Uh, the, the other priestess. Oh... Why so? Worried about her, like, um, messing with me or something? Being angry with me? Oh, not with you, just... She seemed like she was upset with him. Oh, well, people can be unreasonable sometimes, so I Oh, mean... yeah, well, I, I probably should get going as she leaves. <laughs> Uh-oh. Well, bang, okay? <laughs> uh, yeah, but the vibe you get from the human perception is, um, she feels she's very nervous about something. She's pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what I thought earlier. Uh, what do you want to do now, though? We should kill her just to be safe. <laughs> <laughs> Spoken no. like true player characters. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Don't leave town. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, so you have a couple things you can do right now. You, you know the killer of these guards, not guards, excuse me, the killer of these officers is still on the loose. 
Were there any secret spider webs on her? Like a dagger with spider webs? Something that she forgot to tuck away? Just, her hands are covered in blood. Did she have the Masonic Lodge's symbol all etched oh on her no, forehead? Actually, she didn't. Oh, okay. Or like an Illuminati on her clothes? She's not hiding spider webs underneath her skirt. Did she have eight eyes? Yes. Uh, so you got a couple things you can uh? do. You can uh, go and do some more investigating on the crime scenes here. Uh, or you can go back to the octagonal pit. We should look uh, in the officer's room to see if we can find like a secret doorway. Eh, there we go. Or also, like you know, look for was there a break? Was it a break yeah, in a window or? Um, yeah, yeah. Or try to ascertain if there's a branch of the sewer that we missed um, underneath that would lead to there. Yeah, yeah. So uh, if you want to, you could go back. Um, and you uh, spend time looking for like clues and stuff in the room. Um, Shall I roll? You do see the 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 body's still there, and like it has the the chest wound. Uh, there's a lot of blood, and then covered with like a spider web and the sigil that you're used to seeing. Um, this 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 wound is actually something deep. It couldn't have been. It couldn't have been a cultist. Their dagger sucked. Oh, yeah, they, what, they couldn't punch through nothing. No. Would we have known what type of wound is this? Does it is look it stab? jagged? Does it look clean? Is it a stab? Like, what type of a chest wound are we looking at? Does it look like they were bitten with two giant spider fangs? Uh-huh. No, and in fact, uh, what I will say... Does it look like he was stung like Frodo? <gasps> uh-huh. What I will say is the wounds that you see. Uh, why don't you make me a roll for this? Oh, what kind? Uh, is there isn't there like uh, medicine? Isn't that under craft? There is craft first, first aid. aid. Uh, okay, I will take a first aid roll. Oh boy, Oof, nine. Uh, I got fourteen. Ten. <laughs> <laughs> Could I roll monster lore? Uh, yeah, you can roll monster lore. there is something that I would know that might be associated with a wound similar yeah. to this. Oof. Five. Oof. All right, so what I'll say, uh, yeah, if everyone, you got no clue on the monster lore side of things, if anyone else wants to roll it, that's fine too. Cat, your character, Ineth, you uh, maybe have just seen a nug get wounded enough times uh, to where you would know that the kind of wound that's been dealt here it's not entirely in line with the daggers the cult was carrying. Okay. Like, the daggers aren't, I don't want to say sharp enough, but they're not shaped right to make this kind of wound. That How makes so? sense. Nug. Is it, like, thicker? Is it cleaner? Is it more conical? Messier. Is it more puncture-like? Nug got an 11 for monster lore, but that's not very good. Yeah. Uh, with the dagger, it'd be more of, like, a puncture kind of wound this almost looks like a hole carved out which would be very difficult to do with the dagger you could okay. do it but yeah that that gives me a description of what the what, what type of a wound it is it's a lamprey oh it's a leech yeah but with your monster lore rolls you're not so it actually doesn't... no no i'll give you this one because oh. you rolled an 11 and this is an easy check uh uh-huh. you know for sure that this is this is some sort of stab this is not a fang well, I, you knows I know me monsters, and so I lose the claws and the bites and all that. This was no bite. This was a weapon. So if it's a hole, it was probably like a spear. It could also have been something. A like if a chunk is taken out, it could have been like a scythe, which is very culty. Is it circular? Uh, a little bit. Was it a glove that had a bear trap taped to the end? You know what? You look under the bed and you find a bloody bear trap. Glove. Oh my goodness. How could you have possibly known? I'm a genius. No, there's no bear trap. Oh. I was curious to tell, like, is this like an assassination that's been tried, that they've tried to make look, ooh, spooky, but no, it's a f- fairly odd wound. Were these the same type of wounds? Like, could we talk to a priestess? Who might have seen to this? Is this like the same thing? They tell you like because you didn't get to see the other crime scenes up yeah. close. This is exactly the same thing, beat for beat. And there's no blood spatter, and there's nothing that we could. Follow. Well, there is like a lot of blood because he died, but I'm gonna like 
put two coins over his eyes and be like, you are so stupid and so handsome. <laughs> okay. Did we get to look for a secret passageway? Uh, no, but why don't or you guys, entrance. as you're studying this crime scene, make me a deduction check, each oh, of you. Oh, boy. All right. Uh, even 10 for Nug. 13. I got a 16. 16. Hmm. All right, so Ineth coming at it again. Uh, Ineth, you're able to put it together that, um, because you're not only just investigating this crime scene, you're also like getting more information about the other ones. Because when you first started here, you just went right after the cult. Yeah. If you look at a map, uh, and I think there is a map in Baron's place. If not, the Nilf Guardians definitely have one. Of all the different like sewer entrances, places that the officers have been killed, and does all it the make different an octagon sewers. Uh, no, it does not. Um, does it make a spider web? What you notice is that does it make interconnected point of red yarn? No, uh, but what you know for sure is that the murderer, whoever, um, whoever it is, is using the sewers. Yes, is escaping through the sewers. Oh. They're escaping through the sewers. All right, team, time to huddle up. What would be the nearest sewer entrance that we know of from here? What would be the next target? They've only been going after Nilfgaardian officers. That's the only people that have died like this. I'm sad about this guy. Yeah, he 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 was pretty straight up with us. Yeah, yeah. I liked him. Huh. So I do want to search to see if there is a sewer entrance. Uh, uh, nearby, yeah. There's like a, there's a uh, a uh, manhole entrance into the sewer. Fair. Can we close. just have those sealed? Uh, every manhole. Every single one. Yes. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it would not be a great idea, but you technically could, I guess. Problem solved. <laughs> They're trapped down there. Trap them all. <laughs> every They're single manhole. They're escaping via the sewers. <laughs> It's not one of the sick people, is it? We just need to time this with Super Bowl Sunday. They're stuck down there with the Drowners and the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Fuck Leonardo. Huh? Michelangelo's cool. <laughs> um, the only other thing I'll give you from your deduction roll is, you know from your time here that like no one really goes into the sewers because yeah. A, it's disgusting. What? B, there's cultists down there. What? You shut up and see. What? Uh, are just rumors. The only other people that you know that have been down there that have evidence of being in the sewers is some of the priestesses because you know that they've been helping the refugees. The sick fucking Redanians. It's not a priestess going around killing everyone, is it? I mean, didn't they say that they don't particularly like the Nils cards? It just would be weird because if they're, you know, all about helping people who are hurt, like, and all that, going out and straight up hurting someone. Oh, yeah, but you could justify it by saying the Nuff Guardians are barely people because they're invading, they're an invading force. Like, they could claim peace, but be willing to hurt people for peace, you know, quote unquote, and all that. It doesn't have to make sense to us. It just has to make sense to their sick people perverted Gwent playing minds. Oh my god. So you think it's the, the Gwent player, eh? Sure. It's uh, the only other priestess I really know. The Gwent player with the card deck in. <laughs> the officer's quarters. Now check the envelope underneath the, the board game. Check for it. See if you're right. And if you're wrong, you lose. Oh. So what do you want to do? <sighs> I mean, I, to be fair, you also have, um, you know, evidence from the sewer those two letters you know how's that evidence because remember the house you're staying at was where one of the murder sites was yeah so glad you're helping us to put some stuff together because I had forgotten about that well, you made the deduction roll so that's true we're assuming our characters might be smarter than we are late at night <laughs> now here's the question yet. though Hold on it's a second. Midnight. Nug, Nug, Nug wants to speak to the head priestess. Okay. So I thought you were just gonna chant his name. <laughs> nug, Nug. Here's nug, a question. Nug, <laughs> nug, Nug, Nug. nug. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I, I could have done it. Um, nug will say, "Oi, 
I just add an idea. When we's done here, we need to go talk to the head priestess again. Oh. So let's finish up here first. So we don't end up jumping around from place to place a whole lot like a video game. I mean... <laughs> Fast travel! <laughs> what else would you want to do here? You're still at the crime scene, I imagine. Did Were we able to see how they entered? Yeah, did it look like a break-in? Was, like, we had decent roll, but not great roll. So I was just curious. Uh, it's not super clear. Okay. Uh, I mean, if we're done here, then let's head back to the temple. All right, what do you want to ask uh, Gertrude, the head priestess? Oh, you're Miss Gertrude. Uh, yes, Nug. Oh, so we've, in our investigations, have found that two of your priestesses have been sleeping around with a mage. Oh. And they may not have known Scandal. about each other. Bloody mages. But I know it is all horrible, Excuse ain't they? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Bloody male mages. <laughs> Fair enough. Well, I'm only assuming. you. How many priestesses work here? Oh, we got three. I run the show, and then we got three priestesses. We got Siska. Um, she's the redhead. I've seen you talking with her before. Oh, she plays Gwyn. And she plays that devil's card game? Absolutely not. Oh, I need to have a talk with her. Uh, then there's Anidia. She is very sweet. Oh, she's just so very sweet. That's some sketchy as fuck. And then we also have... Uh, the DM scrolls up to the temple page. Ah, Ava. Ava is a uh, local here. I don't trust her based on the name. Uh, she's very nice, so well, she is likes she, to drink. Is she the peppermint flower? Or no, is that the Anitia. other one? <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, 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 so you knew about this. No, the DM's <laughs> reminding you because... Ava. Well, here's what I was thinking. You's obviously the Ed Priest, and you, yes. you probably know about your underlings because you talk and you work I with them. I absolutely know everything about my underlings, and they don't hide anything from me. Were you aware that two of your priestesses were dating a mage? No. Or a scandal. Anyone at all? Did you know they was dating somebody? I mean, I figured they hurt someone in their lives because they do that thing where they get all happy and smiley every now and then. What about that third? That's just not right for a nurse. What about that other priestess? Was she all happy and smiley and dreamy eyed thinking of people she loved? Oh, yes, but she likes to drink and she also writes poetry. So, you know, part of the course. Hmm. Here's what I'm trying to get at for everybody else. What if the mage was dating all three of them and the third one went in there and grabbed their letter and didn't mess with the other two, but because she knew how to get in there, she was able to sneak into his quarters and kill the, the officer that was there. So what if there was like actually a third letter and that's the one that belongs to the killer? But, but that why could would also they kill the officer? Because they're mad, because the officers got rid of the mage and slash took over their city. So then why would we not be more worried about the one who's local? Well, that's that if that's the one that doesn't have the letter that we didn't find a letter for. I was trying to find a way to connect them to knowing how to get into the mage's house. And they would know how to get into the mage's house, theoretically, if they were also dating the mage. But they would have went into the bottom found their letter and that's why their letter wouldn't be there to incriminate them. That was my thought process. I think we should kill Ava. <laughs> Long story short. You could go ask Ava. Just or see Ava, how she reacts. Are you a murderer? No, just see if she knows Baron. <laughs> I mean, okay. I guess. I mean, we could see how, how she reacts to being questioned by the Baron and so things Nug, like that. So Nug will mention this idea to his group. Does you think we could just go talk to her or would that put her to on guard? I think if we all went together, it might freak her out a little bit, yeah. Oh, oh I, I got this then. What if... <laughs> what if instead of all no, of don't us... let Nug go. <laughs> He's so bad at these roles. Um, <laughs> like we could split the party and go talk to a couple of different ones. Oh, Nug, Nug's already friends with the Gwent one, so he'll go find her again. Okay. And so we'll have Viv talk with Ava. And you'll talk with the peppermint flower? Someone else we haven't spoken to type thing. You know, like like we're all split. So it doesn't seem quite as pointed that we're talking to her. I, I say we each take a priestess. Okay. Sounds good to me. Oh, sounds like Baron. Oh. 
Uh, so who wants to talk to who first? Uh, Nug will take Quint player again. Uh, okay, you go up to Siska. She's tending to a wounded Nilfgaardian. Hello, Siska. Hey. Are you still angry? No, not at you. Oh. I'm just mad that I got two times men. Oh, yeah, I get it. Men suck. Yes, uh, no offense. It's all right. I'll take it. Uh, <laughs> you see, Nug here has also had his fair share of relationship problems. <laughs> yeah, but his isn't his fault. No. <laughs> He's a victim. Nug will be like, so let me ask you this. You had no idea that he was a two or more time in scumbag. No, of course not. And uh, how well did you know his place? Uh, did he ever? Well. Did you? Uh, did he ever show you his wink, wink secret laboratory? <laughs> the secret laboratory? I mean, he showed me all his prosthetics, but like, I just knew that he had a, a basement and like a little library and a big room full of potato chips for some reason. Oh yeah, I, I is a pretty good potato chips. <laughs> Uh, would the basement room be the secret laboratory, or did we also find just a basement that was sep- that was like that led to the secret uh, laboratory? Because we felt where they connect, but I can't remember. Did you ever have to sneak into his place, or was he pretty open about your relationship? He did have a basement, um, and the that's basement- where the secret entrance was, but okay. it was also just a basement there. Okay. No, I mean I had to sneak, but you know to not let everyone know that oh. you how, know how uh, how did you sneak in there just went after dark so you just went to his house after dark did no like trips through uh, the sewers uh, we or had something a, like that this, why would i go through the sewers I come up through his toilet very good question <laughs> thank you you've been a lot of help we had a secret knock do you want me to share that oh absolutely it goes i that is, I would never have guessed that. That's a very clever knock. It's been a pleasure talking to you. I Let me go find me other friends. All right. Um, you head out. Yes. Uh, who do you want to talk to next? Uh, I'll go. Okay. And I'll talk to whoever. Was Did you talk to Chocolate One? I played to, I talked to Gwen. Okay. I'll. Which is the same thing chocolate yeah oh that's right i'll talk to the one that isn't peppermint flower okay so the one that we haven't spoken to yet yeah uh okay so you find ava she's uh taking a quick break looking up at the sky it's a nice sunny day today and she's writing in some sort of journal can i look over her shoulder to see what she's writing uh yeah sure make me an awareness roll all right 27 crap uh she is writing some uh She's writing some like novice level poetry about the weather. That's that's so sweet. She's she definitely can't, evil. She can't With be trusted. With clear awareness, you can also tell that she has a small flask hidden in her belt. Mm, alcoholism. <laughs> but she's a poet. And she they hardly go hand even hand. knew it. Uh, no. well, I'm gonna I'm gonna wait for her to finish like the line, and then I'm going to say, right in her ear, "Hi there." <gasps> oh. I thought I was hearing things. Jesus. Uh, hello, hello. You are hearing things. I'm, Hi, a, I'm Ava. I'm things. Hey, nice, nice to meet you. Uh, pulls her <laughs> uh, priestess hood back straight. How, how can I help you? I I'm, see you with uh, the, the, the group that's been investigating stuff here. Uh, you've been hanging out with Siska, I saw. Yeah, I'm, yeah. Not, I'm not going to beat around the bush. Uh, two of your co-workers, they've been interacting with Baron Anselberg. Oh, that's a shame. Is he still here? Oh. Why? Oh, no reason. No, 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 come on. I just, I just, I just, I didn't know him. Oh, uh, he, he, well, he fled recently. Were you also involved with him? No. Did you want to be? <laughs> <laughs> uh, roll a human perception. His the DM frantically is reads his notes. just so magical. Magical. <laughs> <laughs> it's the vibration setting. Uh. Oh. Yeah, you can tell that she had the hots for Baron, but was not involved with him. Gasp. Maybe you also, as you were leaning over, writing, seeing the poetry, uh, read a lot of uh, short little poems about <laughs> pining. Mrs. Baron Anselberg. <laughs> Mrs. Mrs. Baron Anselberg. The title, Mrs. Baron Anselberg. The title to the poem is To My Mysterious Mage Lover. 
<laughs> no, you you get the sense that might she, I compare my love to the weather? <laughs> she actually she has not been with Baron, uh, but she just thinks he's hot. Baron was rolling in it in this town apparently. Boy. <sighs> but yes, he fled. Uh, it's such a shame. Do you know where he went? You're you're a mage. You must know him from your professional circles, right? Yeah, because every more than mage, I would like. Every mage knows each other, right? Of everyone. You're yes. not a part of this conversation. I this, mean, the same with every enough. elf. <laughs> I mean, with mages, though. <laughs> I, I, I suppose. I do know they him. Do know, they, they do know a <laughs> I, fair amount of each other. I, I, but I do know him, yes. <laughs> but I, yeah, I, I actually do. As one of the priestesses here, I, I assume you're aware that his, his old domicile was where one of the murders happened, right? Oh, really? I heard about. Oh my about- God. I heard that there, there had been some killings, but we hadn't seen any other bodies here. it has been pretty hush-hush. I assume that's what you guys were investigating, but they haven't told us much of anything. When? What? The guy we made the promise to not tell anything about the cultists is dead. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> he did! Freedom! I still want to get paid, though. Uh, uh, absolutely. We just have to kill a priestess. Yeah. Or more. Or more. <laughs> oh my goodness. We could just take the safe route and kill them all. <laughs> we should just kill the entire city. Uh, just a very dark brotherhood. And then raise from the Skyrim sewers. Move. Yeah. What we need to do is we need to spend the next four months strategically dumping hard liquor into the sewers, and then one day we just catch it all on fire. Just kill everyone but the Nuff Guardians, <laughs> and you'll come out clean. The hard mm-hmm. liquor in the sewers. That way, all of the alcoholics go to the sewers and get sick. Including the bad priestess. We don't know if she's bad. She's just horny and drunk. She writes poetry. <laughs> hey, I wrote poetry as a teenager. Are you horny and drunk? No. Not See? Right there now. we go. It's the it's the combination of all of them. Anywho. <laughs> but yes. Uh how much do you know about the murders? What can you tell me about the murders? I don't know much at all about the murders. I mean, I just, I know that you, some people were investigating. These priestesses all sound the same in my head. Um, it's it's okay. They're the same character model. They are the same character model. You're they right. They all look just like you. <laughs> <laughs> that would be terrifying. <laughs> just like every other NPC we Photoshop to. <laughs> me as uh, the Scrum the Giant face on all the priestesses. Oh, yeah. Oh, God. Oh, yeah. I had the hunts for him. <laughs> We've gone a whole season without a Randy Savage season. Honestly, scene. I was half hoping that the last priestess we spoke to Would. was going to sound like that. <laughs> like the last NPC we'll meet. <laughs> I just, That's what the spider's going to sound like. I'm genuinely confused if we're on the right track or not. I have no idea. If this doesn't work out, we're just going to go back to the web and hope there's a monster. <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, you're pretty certain... Uh, what were we doing with this again? I've, I've already forgotten. I was trying to figure out if she knew anything. No, she doesn't. Yeah, she doesn't know anything about the killings because they've kept it pretty hush hush. Um, she gives the uh, vibe of being kind of out of it and aloof. Uh, like I said, with your human perception and aware and the com- com- combination with your awareness, you don't think she had anything going on with Baron. Uh, okay. Well, if that's the case, I'm going to suggest a better rhyme for the third line and then leave. That's a good idea. Thank you. A villain. (laughs) You just don't like poets, do you? (laughs) Don't trust poet NPCs. They can't be trusted. They're too creative. (laughs) (laughs) If they're smarter than me, they can't be trusted. That's most people in this game, Nug. You stop that! (laughs) Uh, so that's Siska and Ava. You also had Anigia, who is the, quote, little peppermint flower. <laughs> the nervous one. Right. Did you act surprised when she found out he was two-timing? No, she acted nervous. Nervous, yeah. She acted nervous. She's the villain. Kill her. <laughs> I think we should... I think we should just kill all of them. <laughs> Agreed. A blood pact shall be Who made. wanted to talk to Anigia? I cannot express I more can't. the fact that I rammed my microphone up against my face when I said that. <laughs> it was it was for it was it was important. 
It is important. So who do you want to talk to next? I mean, I'll try. I think I would like to try to talk to this. Um, <laughs> Roger, or Roger. Talk. We Okay, so let me recap for me. We're trying to figure out if she knew anything about, like, a passage... It, like, if how she got there. Yeah, if she knew the secret entrance to his home, then that's suspect. Or or if Egan, I can just get her to talk enough that she lets go some of why she's nervous or, or whatever. reveals information she shouldn't know. As far as we're concerned, one of these priests has to be it. Either that or it's the monster in the bottom and we just were too... And we're just going in circles. It's very possible. That it would All right, not I'm going to try time. talking to her. Okay, what do you want to say? Let's just go up. Oh, hello there. Uh, hello. Uh, you come up to her. She is uh, gardening this little, like, alchemical plant kind of uh, garden in the temple. Interesting. Interesting. Oh, do you uh... an alchemical plant garden. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that was in his letter for her, actually. That's how they... Didn't he mention that he was going to grow a garden in her honor? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> you seem really proud that you remembered that. I am. <laughs> Uh, she, oh, are you into uh, gardening much? Well, just a little bit. What do you like to grow? Plants. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, I f- oh. feel the investigation. <laughs> oh, oh. Any, anyway, plants. Okay. <laughs> Look, plants. <laughs> <laughs> there, there. There's no easy way to ask. So, I'm just going to ask. Uh, about Baron. Oh, yeah. From one one woman to another, you you seemed, well, nervous. I would feel angry or sad, but why nervous? I... I only care. Oh, I mean, I... He was important to me, and, you know, I'm worried about his safety because he's gone now, and, uh, uh, I I don't know. And also, like, he he was involved with one of my friends, and now we both know, and that's a little awkward, and wonder who he was really interested in. Was it a secret that you were canoodling with him? (laughs) (laughs) Whoa, what a word. I, I mean, yeah, I didn't want to broadcast that a priestess is out there with a mage. Then, in a town this small, full of so many soldiers. I mean, it's not a small town, it's a city. Oh, but eyes are everywhere. How did you, you know, hide it? Uh, I, I just, you know, worked out when to uh, meet him at different places and went in disguise make a human perception. Oh, I'm gonna do it. That's oh, crappity crap. Oh. By 12. I fumbled by 12. Jeez. You are absolutely convinced that she has some disguises. <laughs> and she is not lying to you. Oh, fascinating. Cat is convinced that this is not true, but Inef is convinced that she's telling the truth and she's got disguises and all's on the up and up. All right, then. Well, I'll let you get back to your work. I can't hold you too long. Oh, thank you. Um, yeah, you notice she's like, she's harvesting a bunch of different plants. Uh, I do have some alchemical knowledge. Are any of those potentially dangerous? No, some of them are a little valuable, but like... Yeah, she. It's they're mostly used for like medicines and okay. different things. Um, oh, sorry, guys. Roll an awareness. I feel, I feel like my f- I fumbled at the wrong time. Hey, it's the dice. It's not you. Twenty. Oh. Uh, yeah. You notice she's harvesting like a lot, but there are a lot of patients, so maybe it's for that. But yeah. I guess we have to regroup. Or only a priest. Oh, I I group. How's it going? Oh, hi. Anyone act suspicious on your ends? Not at all. Vive? I do not think that there was a single brain cell in that woman's head. I ain't got nothing on my side either. So, in that case, I... I, Did you find out anything interesting, though? Because apparently, the one that I talked to, she was interested in the Baron. I don't know what it is about him. 
I wasn't feeling anything, but that maybe it's because I'm not a priestess. Or he might have the special moves on the religious folk. That's weird to say, and I don't like it, but apparently it's true. I didn't like the way you said it either. Did yeah, you guys find out anything juicy? Oh, the girl I spoke to, she, uh, she must have been good at disguises. Oh, yeah, Why mine. do you say that? That's how she hi- hid away. Oh, yeah. so she did hide away. Yeah, you know, mine, to get to him. Mine. I think I actually went to ask her about that. Mine. And, uh, and, and she sure is good with the al- alchemical gun. Yeah, mine, he mentioned. mine snuck around a you lot, know? too. Said they had to wait till, like, when it was really dark outside so no one saw him and whatnot. Any secret knock? Was, hey, yeah, he had a secret knock. It went like this. That's... Don't beat on my Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I one of the have mages, one of the uh, priestesses bursts forward, horny as fuck. <laughs> I heard the knock. <laughs> <laughs> I had an idea. Only the priestesses, or some of them, knew about a secret place. So maybe they, they's got to be involved. What if we trick them? I'm going to cast glamour and make myself look like Baron. That's a better trick than I think I was thinking of. I was going to pull a, like, end of a detective movie nonsense, but that's a lot easier. (laughs) What was your idea? Um, Find out from Gertrude when they're done for the day, because they're all working at once. They probably all stop at once, too. Hold them in a room, bust in, tell them, we found out one of yous is killing people, and the guards are on their way. You need to stay here and see which one panicked and ran first or attacked. You know, kind of like the end of a detective movie. That's a little brute force. <laughs> That's okay. That sounds like Nug. We're desperate. That's such a <laughs> Nug plan. <laughs> and you want to dress up as Baron? Yes. Magic. With magic. Oh my goodness. So what do you want to do? Call pitch, us Mystery Ink. Pitch me this this scene. <laughs> no, we're so bad at the mystery part. I of know. This. <laughs> I I would like to go and kill the spider. Let's just kill the spider for there, fuck's sake. There, let's there, just kill the spider. Before we do all this, there's, shouldn't we investigate the it. pit? I don't think there's a monster anymore. The last bad guy is whichever priestess is the villain, which we know now, but we don't know how to have that happen in game. But like. A weapon killed those people. Should we say that they were that the the, the 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 person killing the people is using the sewers? And that the sewers near to the officers places should be guarded? But they already know that. Well they're not doing shit about it! They can't! There's too many manholes! Too many. I like your glamour idea. What are you going to do? Just like strut down the street to jazz as Baron Anselberg? <laughs> yep, I'm going to pretend that I fall over, reconnect my leg, and then... <laughs> <laughs> Dance down the street like Spider-Man yeah, from Spider-Man yeah. 3. <laughs> yes, exactly. Uh, what was it? Just what was whoever it? Um, chases you first is the villain. Is that it? What was it? Was it? Oh, God, they called him something. Bully something. Bully McGuire? Yeah. Is that the plan? Just dress up as the Baron, strut down the street like Spider-Man, and whoever follows you first is obviously the villain? Yes. But, but that just would be who's the most upset with Baron for two-timing her. No, I'm going to sh- I'm gonna show it off, and I'm going to go back to the <laughs> house, and anybody a- who is able to get in through the secret door... <laughs> going to give a twirl? <laughs> ever, anybody who is able to get it in through the secret... New idea. Yeah. Oh my I'm going to be glamoured as Baron Anselberg. I'm going to strut around the mage's, uh, not the mage's place, the priestess's place with you on oh. my arm. And then I'm going to go back to the house. And, have, and Nug can be waiting in the sewer entrance. Yes. Waiting in the, la- the secret and laboratory. And it might make comes sense because ju- I straight up carry a forge all over the place. Oh, you're, be like, oh, your leg is so fascinating. Tell me more. Oh, your favor win. <laughs> yes. Oh, my goodness. If one of them comes into a laboratory, do I just kill them? Knock them out if you can. Okay, because they look, they act like awfully nice people, and if it's a misunderstanding and I killed them, I'd feel awful bad, not that we'd know in hindsight. I mean, the thing is, if they did come in uh, through the secret tunnel after seeing, well, supposedly in jealousy, 
chances are they would want to kill him anyways. That's fair. So, but right. why Noted. are they killing officers if they're upset about Baron? Well, it's not. It might not be. That this might just be too like different crossing things. Yeah, it might not be that they're killing officers because of Baron, Yeah, but they knew how to get into this house because they knew Baron. Yeah. And that's how they were able to kill that officer because they knew the secret entrance into his house. But why would they want to kill? What's the motive for killing the officer? Because they're invaders. Yeah. Okay. And if it's... um, Ava was the local girl, right? Yeah. yeah. Not Peppermint Flower. Yes. And it the, could, it's still, and they're invaders. They're killing people and causing people to suffer. It could yeah. just, I mean, they could have any number okay. of reasons. Okay, they're also going down into the sewers. We know all of them are to heal people. Yeah. Well, I mean, if you yeah. want to try this bait and switch, let's go for it. So right. I've been doing some reading while you guys have been hashing out this batshit plan. Yes. <laughs> you mean this genius plan. And what I will say is I don't think you can do this with glamour. Damn it. Glamour allows you to cast an illusion around yourself that makes you look stunning. The spell grants you a plus three to seduction, charisma, and leadership. However, there is a journeyman spell called Illusion that fits the bill for this perfectly. Uh, Okay. Illusion allows you to create any visual illusion you want within 20 meters of yourself. Anyone who fails resist magic check sees the illusion and believes it. How many points is it? Uh, it Eight stamina. But it's a journeyman spell. No, to, to learn. learn it. Oh, uh, it would be... A lot of points. Uh, how many IP do you have? Three. <laughs> <laughs> no, okay. Listen, we don't Which have to... Which means that I would need to go down and study at the point of power. We don't have... Is it an earth spell, though? Because those can only be applied to earth. No, the IP can... It's any magic or spell. Oh, because I was going to say we could do this via word of mouth instead of magic if we thought that would be easier. But this could also be a good excuse to go to the point of power. The so, place of power. The place of power. And make sure that we've not been on a wild goose chase this whole time. And there's many, really a monster. How many crowns does everyone have? Like 200. I have 416 if you need any. We are really not good at investigating. <laughs> It's also like 1230 right now. I think, listen, if we can't get the magic, there's another way we can do this. Super easy. Just word of mouth it? Yeah. So here's what we do. The Viver one has the idea about acting like Baron, realizes the glamour might not be good enough. So then here's what we decide to do. We walk through the temple because we're just going to be spending time there. Nug's injured. Maybe he's got to do something there, act like he's got to be there to get better or something like that but we just as we walk around past each of the priestess we'll they'll I'm just ov- gonna tip off the captain so that they can kill everybody here they'll they'll uh, <laughs> overhear us say baron's going to be back tonight says that he may have information on someone who's been able to sneak around the city that might help us find who's killing people um and we'll just make sure each of the priestess overhear this. And then when we're done there, we go wait in the study okay. and see if one of them comes through. Uh, Drow, you mentioned tipping off the Nilf Guardians. Do you do that? Mm, no. Okay. Well, the thing is, if we tip off the Nilf Guardians, then they'll probably put up extra guards. And then if there is one of these priestesses, they'll get really, you know, nervous about it and maybe not come out. Not to mention the Nilf Guardians have basically said this is our job. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, how many of you are going to be trying to pass this off? Is this a nug led operation, or uh, are all of you going to basically try to sell this idea that Baron is back in town? It'd probably be a combination, like Nug and Viv for one priestess, Viv and Ineth for another. Okay. Nug uh, and Ineth for the other. Then what I'm going to say is, why don't you all make me a persuasion roll? All right. Nug got a thirteen. Because they're humans, I get a plus one. Yes. Okay. Hey, every little bit counts. Whoa. Oh, oh. Uh, that's a 10 26. and then a 9, 26. Okay. I figured these people out like they are pieces of metal. Okay. But metal Everyone? in my sight. 13. Oh, you got 13. My Minnesotan charm. All right. So I've averaged everything together here. Uh, and what are you going to do at your place to wait for this? Just wait down there in the study. But Just hidden. in the study? Should uh, we put someone in the sewer? Well, that's that's what I'm talking about, the, the secret entrance. Yeah, should we put someone hidden by the secret entrance? I was just going to wait in the hidden room itself. 
because, I mean, if they go inside the hidden room, then we'll see them. There would be plenty of places to hide in there. Like the hidden room as in the lab, or? Yeah, the one that's attached to the sewer. Okay. The secret. The, the one that only the one who was going to kill the Nilfgaardian officer would know about, as far as we can tell. Uh, is this where all you're going to be? We should probably put someone in Baron's house, too. Because if we're connect, if we're if there's a passage and we we're not splitting the party, we just use the passage and we get back together. I mean, what yeah. if they don't come in through the secret passage? Well, then they're not. I mean, I guess. All right, so you're all at the bottom. It sounds like <laughs> you can't make up your mind. So I'm just gonna say you're all at the bottom, uh, unless you want to say otherwise. Nah, I'm good. All right, so let's let's imagine a scene here. Uh, let's do it the style of a lot of like. You see TV shows with their montages setting up for stuff. You see all of you, you spent like the day uh, at the temple. Um, Nug is like tripping and trying to fall over like uh, uh, a stair in the in the house, trying to injure his foot. <laughs> Eventually gets it off and he limps over to the temple. And we see all of you in a quick flash talking to the priestesses trying to convince them that you hurt his foot and that Viv has lost their connection to magical healing for the day uh, and then he's being worked on by a different priestess um, and then uh, we see Ineth just talking to Viverwin about Baron Anselberg with Anigia in the background listening in and we flash forward to uh, tonight where you guys are waiting and you're waiting and you look at your sundials and you can't tell the time because it's dark. Um, so you pull out your iPhone and you check the time and it's like one in the morning and you're waiting, Nug's nodding off, Viverwind's reading a spell tome by like magical flame and the door <laughs> opens from the sewer and you see standing before you Anigia. The nervous one, right? The nervous one. And that's where we're going to pick up next week. Good. Oh, oh my goodness. <laughs> I had to play it right. I rolled poorly, so it's no that's knowledge. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to kill her. <laughs> one priestess down, two more to go. That's right. We won't be stopped till all the priestesses are dead. Get rid of them. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of the Third Gallon Podcast. If you enjoyed it, please consider subscribing, rating, and reviewing us. If you want to see more from us, check out our website, thirdgallon.com, or follow us on Twitter. We are at thirdgallon, that's T-H-I-R-D, gallon. You can also tweet at us using the hashtag thirdgallon, and we are on Instagram, TikTok, and Facebook with the same handle, at thirdgallon. We also publish a video version of this podcast on YouTube, which you can find on our channel, The Third Gallon. Our ambience for this episode was composed by Michael Gelfi, and you can find more of his work at youtube.com slash Music, and you can support his awesome work at patreon.com slash michaelgelfi. Our theme music for this season was composed by Alexander Nakarada. You can find more of his work at serpentsoundstudios.com and support him at patreon.com slash anakarada. That's patreon.com slash A-N-A-K-A-R-A-D-A. Thanks again for listening, and we'll see you next time.